What's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video guys and today I'm gonna be going over my 2021 Madden 22 quarterback base elite players. Now here's the thing guys, basically quarterbacks is typically around 12 to 13 as there was last year. I mean again that number could skew a little bit but we're gonna be doing the top eight. Now there will be some honorable mentions which I will start with in just a second but I am excited to go through this guys. More or less you will see all these guys as elites. The order may be a little bit different, but I feel like my order is pretty accurate for the most part. I'll give you guys reasoning on why each and every one person's going to come up and in what stats they'll probably end up changing around. And before we get into today's video, if you are into the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn that only bell, give this video a big thumbs up as always. If you haven't already, comment down below. Let me know who your number one base lead overall player is going to be. Like, who's your number one quarterback you want to see? Is it, you know, if you're a Vikings fan, is it Kirk Cousins? Do you hope some of these guys stay in? Because some guys will have to come out, right, to make room for some other guys. So let me know down below. And of course, subscribe, noty bell. But let's get into the video. So starting off from our honorable mentions, guys, I'm going to get out of the way. Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert for me would have been in the base elites. He just didn't make it because, of course, I only did top eight. I think he's going to be like a low 80 overall, but he is going to be up there. I believe he did have a great year. He had rookie of the year. I think there's a chance he's up there. But again, Kyler also won rookie of the year and he was a base gold the following year. So that's kind of why I didn't have many anyways. Um, you know, Justin Herbert, of course, had a better year than Kyler Murray did. But just want to get that out of there. Now, here we go. So. Kyler Murray, I think, will be like an 82 overall, in my personal opinion. I think 82 is fair for Kyler Murray. Had a great year. Had great two, two great years. A rookie and a sophomore campaign. I think it'll be like an 82 overall. Basically, card. Now, what has to come up to get him to there? I think his base speed will be like an 84. I, that only comes to probably one. But I do think his passing stats will all be in the um, the mid-70s. So, I think he'll have like, an, in my opinion, he'll have a 84 speed and mid-70s throwing, which would make him a, a pretty good like day one budget quarterback in terms of speed. Um, going in at number seven, we have Dak Prescott. I think Dak Prescott actually holds his 82 spot. Now, in my opinion, Dak Prescott was having an MVP season up until week five. Had the pace held, uh, you know, with Aaron Rodgers and all those guys. So, it was an injury, but when Saquon got hurt, or when Saquon had, you know, stuff going on, our other players have gotten hurt. The next year, they still got their base elite. Um, I don't think Dak goes up like he should have, but I think he does stay around the same spot. Maybe even an 81 if he falls behind even one. I do think Dak will be up there. Again, Dak's stats stay just about the same. He's going to end up with a mid-70 speed, um, you know, high 70, low 80, throwing stats all around the board. Be a good quarterback. I, I wouldn't say it's like a meta kind of guy you're going to be really using, depending on how they make next year, but still going to be good. Number six, we got Lamar Jackson. Yes, Lamar Jackson fell in my rankings, from in my opinion. Now, Lamar Jackson last year would have been, I think, the third best quarterback, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think third. But I think this year he falls to an 83 overall. Now, it has nothing to do with him. He was primarily an 86 because he was the cover athlete. He was the guy you got for free. So, the 86 overall is kind of like we don't want to give him such a high overall, but not such a low because he's a free card. But I think this year his passing numbers fall off a little. Like not, not, not statistically wise, but if you guys watched last year, he regressed a little bit from his MVP season, which is okay to do. His MVP was absolutely insane. But I think in terms of Madden, he's going to come down to around an 80. He's going to be the number six quarterback, 83. What's well, going to come down on this card? Uh, his passing. I mean, his speed will come down probably one. His, his excel speed and agility probably come down like one each just to make it a little bit lower. I think his throw on the run comes down to like an 82. His throw power comes down to an 83. And his short comes down to low 80s. Um, and same with throwing to pressure. That should get him to the 83. But yeah, that's about it for that. He's number seven, six on my board. Then we got Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen takes a pretty big jump up to 84 as a base elite. Josh Allen had a great year, was an MVP candidate for a while. At one point, people had him as the front runner, but of course, Aaron Rodgers didn't end up taking that. Now, if we check here, what's going to change for Josh Allen if he takes a up to an 84 plus six increase? I think his passing. First off, his throw power is going to be in the low 90s, probably, if it stay, you know, stays the pace. He's going to be one of the best day one throw power guys, which is kind of important, especially when in terms of like, you know, when you're looking towards guys who can get gunslinger early on. He won't be able to get it as a base elite, but typically, he would have a chance, possibly, he would have a chance on his next upgrade if it's early enough to hit that, you know, threshold for Gunslinger, which is always cool to see because not everyone gets throw power like that. I think what comes up is his short, medium, and deep will all be high 70s, low 80s, and his throw in the row will be low 80s because it'll be one of those guys. Oh, and his speed will be in the 80s. It'll be like a low 80. So that's kind of one of those guys that can kind of do it all. He'll have speed and throw power. If you can use him properly, going to be a good day one quarterback. Coming in at number four, we have Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson was actually number two this year, but I think he does fall for two distinct reasons, and that's primarily because the MVP and the Super Bowl winner still haven't won yet. But Russell Wilson, he'll come down only, you know, he'll come down to an 85, not a big deal. His throwing probably all takes a hit of one, and his speed probably stays around the same. Russell Wilson's still going to be one of the best day one quarterbacks, as per usual. But the only thing with Russell Wilson, typically, is that he's too well-rounded for my liking. And that's always been a problem with Russell Wilson cards, is that, see, he's not a scrambler in terms of, like, 
You can't buy him just for speed. He's not going to be like a Kyler or a Lamar. And when you look at his throw, he's pretty well rounded, but his throw power is low. So he always has like a weaker arm. So a weaker arm combined with less speed ends up being kind of like a Dak Prescott. Although a Russ Wilson upgrade card typically is pretty good. But it's not always, it doesn't always last that long. So it really depends on how they build next year. If they build next year based on ratings, Russ Wilson's a good card. If they build it based on threshold, Russ Wilson's going to start missing a lot of thresholds, right? Because that's what ends up happening with him. Uh, but his throw, his, throw, his throw stats are good. His throw power is which was, you know, a bit higher. And his speed should have at least been in the 80s in my personal opinion but again russell wilson's still gonna want to be better day one quarterbacks coming in at number three we got tom brady tom brady actually moves up two spots in this in my rankings he goes up to an 86 overall and that's primarily because he did just win the super bowl at his age which is crazy he's on the cover of madden which usually keeps you at around 86 plus overall tom brady's gonna be good i mean again if in terms of madden i don't think he'll be that good but in terms of his overall he's gonna be good again he gets a two plus increase what does he get here he ends up with just probably mid 80, mid mid low 80 throwing stats, low throw power. Going to be a horrible day one Madden quarterback, but it's always been the case with him. He's never really been a good day one quarterback. He can't run, he can't do anything, he can't break, he can't break the sack. And for some reason, his throwing stats are never that great. I think his throw power stays around the same. I think his stat, his passing stats come up a little bit. But otherwise, I don't think this is that great of a quarterback in terms of Madden. Now the next two are going to be really good day one quarterbacks. I got Aaron Rodgers number two. Takes a big leap forward, gets a plus four overall increase to 87, in my personal opinion. Um, he won the MVP, he had a great year. Now, the only thing is if he will be in a Packers jersey when we get this card. If the, I wonder if all the trade rumors will actually affect his overall. I don't think it will. I think he's going to be just they're gonna give him what he gets and they'll work on his team and everything later. Now, it's possible he does end up with double team chems, Packers, and whoever else. But he's been a Packers whole life, so it'll be interesting to see what team he goes to in terms of theme teams. But this card does look really good. I mean, the thing with Aaron Rodgers cards, you can have high throw power, well-rounded accuracy, and a super fast release. And 87 overall, you know, doesn't change that too much. I mean, again, plus four though. I think his speed ends up in the low 70s. His throw power ends up around a 90, which is really good like Josh Allen. And he ends up with better throwing stats than Josh Allen, just lower speed. Ends up with all green, short, medium, and deep accuracy. Ends up being a really, really, really good day one quarterback as well. And then number one on our list is Patrick Mahomes, the other cover athlete. Again, Brady's close, but I have to give Mahomes a nod again. I think he stays at his 88 overall. I don't think that changes. He reclaims his top spot at quarterback, which probably will last for a long time, pending, you know, and willing injuries, hopefully. But um, Patrick Mahomes, 88 overall. This card's going to be the same, exact same thing. He's going to have low, low, mid-70 speed, going to have close to 90 throw power, going to have all media, middle to high 80 throwing stats as a whole, and the card ends up being super, super, super great. Uh, Mahomes ends up being, again, Probably the best day one quarterback because of the throw power and passing stats. Now, it really just depends, again, on threshold. The thresholds are the same stupid stuff that they've been. You end up being able to use uh, Josh Allen very similarly because he's in the 80 passing stats, let's just say. But he has higher throw power and higher speed, and it's just dumb. It should be based on exact stats. In that case, he'll be the best thrower by a wide margin, as well as having a super good, you know, uh, you know super strong arm, as well as being able to throw it deep, and being Patrick Mahomes, of course. But otherwise, guys, I really do like... Um, Patrick Mahomes is going to be a great card again day one going to be super expensive probably once again but overall guys that was the video hopefully you guys did enjoy comment down below if you guys have any any concerns about this list anyone you think should be in who should be out comment it down below let me know what you guys think subscribe to the channel turn on that noti bell come join the family comment down below and enjoy the rest of your day guys I'm out peace